Welcome to the Church of Thomas. The Rock Teddy Bears, 12207. My friend, Reverend uh, Dr. Al Beezer, relayed a wonderful story to me a couple of years ago that has stuck with me. It is a story he got from a soldier in Iraq. In this season of giving, gift giving, it shows the value of giving not for prestige, but from your heart. A single gift of the heart has a million times the value of a dozen gifts of show. The story in its entirety is in his book, Life After Death, What, Where, When, Why, and How, A Scientific Proof. The book is filled with thought-provoking thought stories. The background on the story was wonderful as well as sad. There were children who lost their childhoods. In the unsanitized world of real war, people who are not fighting are killed. Here in the U.S., there is a general, though not universal, respect for life. It takes extensive training to turn a law-abiding citizen into a soldier. The big difference is being a soldier makes you capable of killing other people that are called the enemy. You have to be able to take orders from a superior officer. Not taking orders can put that soldier's life in danger. There is a definite disconnect between what our parents taught you and the rules that in many cases are life and death in a war zone. It is a huge reason that many soldiers come back with emotional as well as spiritual scars. When a soldier is in a war zone, they still carry the lessons their parents passed down. In an effort to nurture this tiny thread connecting them to their civilian past, there can be some instances of very compassionate actions. There are other times that soldiers in this war have reached out to help. There were children who were injured that a squad of soldiers would take under their wings. Some of these children have made it to the U.S. for medical treatment that could not be had anywhere in their homeland. An abandoned, uh, abandoned kids have been brought back to health and found homes. The story, I will tell you, does not detract from these other acts of compassion. The story starts with kids who are rightfully traumatized. Their homes are caught in a crossfire of opposing forces. Their families are picked off by suicide bombers, stray gunfire, and intentional attacks. There is no safe place uh, to feel uh, if they wanted to. There is no safe place to flee to even if they wanted to. The idea of playing a simple game of ball outside would be suicidal. Everyone in a war zone is under siege, not just the soldiers. A group of soldiers wanted to do something to help these kids. These kids reminded them of the kids they had at home. The hearts of these soldiers cried for the pain in these kids' eyes. I do not know who came up with the idea. One of the soldiers remembered how they were able to comfort their own kids back home. The comfort, comfort of a teddy bear had eased the vaccination fears not being able to go to sleep without it, something to hug on during a surgery recovery, a first trip away from mom. All of these have been, uh, had been calmed in some small measure by the stuffed, cuddleable, always attentive companion of a teddy bear. They got together and agreed to solicit teddy bears from the folks back home. Moms, dads, uncles, aunts, little kids, grandparents all got the word out. A great many teddy bears were collected to ship to Iraq. As the shipments arrived, they were handed out like candy bars used to be. Every kid in the areas they patrolled were given a teddy bear. Every kid who showed up for care of a wound or illness was given a teddy bear to keep them company during and after the stitches or shots. The soldiers were soon seeing kids walking on the road with a teddy bear stuffed under the child's arm. It did the soldiers good to feel that they had helped in some small way. For many of these kids, this was the only present they had ever gotten. It may have been the only toy they could play with. Can you envi envision a life where there can be no play? A childhood without a single toy. A short little life where there has no memory of peace. A few months after the toys were first starting to get there, new homes something happened. It was very unusual and extremely noteworthy. The soldiers who were part of a group handing out the teddy bears were on patrol. 
They were all lined up in their armored vehicles. In the middle of the road sat a little girl. She was clutching her new friend, a teddy bear. The soldiers did not want to stop moving. It was dangerous to do so. There could be snipers nearby. They waved her to move. She ignored them. There was no tentative smile as many of the kids had after getting their teddy bears on the girl's face. There was great concern that she was an unknowing part of a trap. As a result, no one wanted to leave the shelter and protection of the vehicles. They shouted and revved the engine some more. It was nerve-wracking just sitting there. They were getting very frustrated at being made a sitting duck. Finally, one of the soldiers was told to go out and move the little girl. He took a good look around and climbed out of the shelter. He walked over to the little girl and tried not to look threatening. When he bent down to pick her up, his eyes were drawn to a patch of disturbed dirt a couple of feet from her little body. It was then that he stopped cold in his tracks. There was a buried EID in the road. It was right where the convoy of vehicles would have run over it. They would never have seen it. Only getting down to a child's level would have made it visible. The little girl saw his recognition of the danger. She started to smile, a shy little smile then. She slowly got up from the dirt, dusted herself off. She walked away with her precious gift, still clutched tightly in her skinny little arms. The soldiers marked the spot for the bomb squad and safely detoured around the danger. The danger was only the gift, the danger that only the gift from a child could point out with her unmoving body. Her act of great courage saved many lives that day. She could have been run over if someone had not been sent out to move her. She did not want these soldiers who had been kind to her to hurt her, to be hurt. They reminded her of her uncles she had seen die. Her only shield for protection was her new friend, the teddy bear. I'm reminded of the love Jesus showed to the children that came to see him. He called them the true inheritors of heaven. By giving comfort to the most helpless of God's children, these soldiers lived up to the highest principles of Christian understanding and compassion. We do not know if this child was a child or an angel. By offering hospitality to these children, the soldiers proved their worth. Maybe they had entertained an angel among the children they had given teddy bears to. They gave with their hearts to heal the children and not to look good. Their gifts were amply rewarded by the risk to life and limb that this child took on their behalf. It literally saved their lives. Their love for those in pain was answered by the compassion of the little girl who saved the convoy. May all of your gifts be as heartfelt. You may never see more than a smile for your gift, but you never know how far reaching your love will extend. Let your heart be your guide. God bless the whole world. No exceptions. Angel Eliza.